there's an interesting point on that too. Uh, there's a criteria that's totally arbitrary, and it's it was a footnote in one of Einstein's writings. Can't tell you where it is. Uh, it's in a video by Veritasium, but basically, you can assume that light is traveling infinitely fast in one direction, half as fast in the opposite direction, and everything would seem to work out the same way. And similarly, you can assume that light travels infinitely fast towards the observer and half as fast away from the observer, and all the timings would work out the same as well, which would mean that everything we would see out in space, if you were to believe in space, as many of you do not, that's fine, um, mm -hmm. then everything you'd be seeing, no matter how far away, would be happening right now if you adopted that arbitrary criteria instead. What is, ha what is half of infinite? No, half the speed of light. I, 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 okay, I wasn't very clear. At half the speed of C, one half C, 186,000 miles. Oh, okay. So whatever yeah. half that well, is. Well, no one's ever measured the one-way speed of light. Exactly. And that, that was a interesting, very tasking video. Again, yeah. he's not kind of, he's not in your camp, but. Uh, it's no, I've seen the video. I've seen the video. He just shows oh, the conceptual, that? yeah, the conceptual problems with C, even according to relativity and how Einstein specifically said it's an unsolvable problem that can never be tested because of the limit of clocks. Yeah, yeah. And synchronization. It's fascinating. What's also fascinating um, is we've proven that C is not correct. It's literally been debunked. So that's what I wanted to ask you, which is so when you say like no one's measured a one way speed of light, you know, I've been talking to Alan about this recently. Maybe he could chime in on this. Would you would you say instead that when you do attempt to measure the one way speed of light, it's not consistent as a like a, a constant, like there's a derivation or something like that? Would you say it like that instead, or would you still stick to like no one's measured a one way speed of light? Well, just even conceptually in their paradigm, like you can't measure the one way speed of light, but in what we perceive, what we use to be the speed of light, it it varies. So it, so it should be constant according to them. See. And they basically just assume that the light travels the same speed there and back. And really, they can't measure just one of the ways. So they just assume that, right? And they say, well, there's no logical reason that it would change one direction or whatever. But outside of that, like, we see that light does change with direction, right? The propagation rate, which is actually a rate of induction into the ether. The propagation rate of light is faster relative to direction. You know, so therefore... Like this whole idea of, of like C is just impossible. It's been refuted. It also just doesn't work on its face. If I shoot a laser through a, a pane of glass, right? If it's traveling from point A to point B with a certain speed, then it looks like it slows down 30% through the glass and then it speeds back up once it leaves the glass. But it can't do that, obviously, right? Because that would violate the law of conservation of energy and momentum. Because if there was no energy introduced to it once it left the glass it couldn't speed back up right so what they say is oh it's going at constant speed and in the glass it just travels a greater distance and it go it just takes all these like a million different little detour routes and then comes i was back just about to side. put on my glober glasses man just like you be having to say well, what about the different different <laughs> angles and all the different uh bouncing off of the walls and yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah but what's problem with the problem with that though is like you can see that the laser actually just goes through the glass it, do, it doesn't go a billion different little detours. Bro, right? that's so what just, I said. I'm like, bro, it, go, it still goes in one direction. Why are y'all acting like it going in all these different directions, bro? And this is before I even had these conversations. I was just thinking like, bro, but is it changing direction? Yeah, you, you, you can literally, you can debunk the claim of the speed of light and that light physically travels by shooting a laser through a piece of glass. Literally. literally. Can't you see the direction change through a prism, though? Literally just see it, change angle. Uh, did, I never said that the perceived direction of light cannot change. What I said is if you shoot a laser through a pane of glass, if it was traveling from point A to point B, it would have to slow down 30%, measurably so. So they claim, oh, it actually just went a greater distance, so it made it look like it was going slower. It's an illusion, but you can look at the laser, it goes straight through the glass. You know, and, and again, just to, for clarity, this is just operating within the paradigm that light actually travels. So we're yeah, this proves it doesn't. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This literally proves that it doesn't travel. And what it proves is that 
light is the excitation of a medium and the glass is just an additional medium. So like the way that you perceive the light changes because now before you can receive that information that is visible light, the excitation that is light, really light is invisible and illumination is what is visible. Before you can even receive that information, it now has to go through a whole nother medium. That's why it takes longer. It's actually like very simple. Right? Yo, and then in, in 1851, Fresnel showed it with water and it goes it's Bro. it goes 44 percent proportional velocity to the water going both ways the fringe is going both or both sides of the fringe show that proportional velocity of the water so it's just like uh yeah it's pretty unequivocal yeah i was just about to bring that up man that's why they don't talk about your boy arago because exactly what you just said he measured the his laboratory confirmation of c was that he measured the the variant the different speed against it going uh, through the medium? Crazy. This is the type of stuff ballers will never address. By the way, like this yeah. is because it's like, dude. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right, man. But it's like, it's like, oh, who who was the guy that first measured C in a laboratory? The, the, like, no one knows. No one knows. It's always Romer. Go, go back to Romer, guys. Look, the guy that looked in the sky and saw the thing happening, he measured the speed of light you know, or whatever, but like the first guy to actually experiment or do it quote unquote in the lab, it's, uh, his name was Argo in 1851. It's like one of the hardest papers to find. You won't find it because the way, because what he shows and what he measured and what he did and what he proved was that the speed of light changes when it goes into a medium. It's not taking a longer route and all this stuff. It literally changes the speed. Like, so it's, yeah, to even present it to us and this has with, uh, and ignore that historical narrative, like, you know, uh, just, just use Romer as your example, guys. There's an experiment that I'd like to reproduce sometime, uh, and that is the the gear on the hill with a with a candle and a mirror on another hill. Have you heard of that one? Uh, is that the one where they? No. It sounds okay, so it, you're, it sounds you're looking, I'd like to capture this on camera to see if I can reproduce it, just to just to see if I can call a bullcrap on it. And that is so. This there's like a there's like a, a weird shadow effect where eventually you can get the, the light bouncing back from the mirror on the other hill to kind of center itself up with the blurred, I guess, silhouette of ear teeth passing by because you're pointing the camera between what would be ear teeth going by. And the idea is that the light from your candle, or in this case, it would be a flashlight it's sort of in the 21st century, it would emit through one set of gear teeth and bounce off that mirror and come back through the next pair of gear teeth and the fact that the that the shadows are not always lined up with that light depending on the rpm of that gear kind of demonstrates that there is some sort of timing going on here there's some sort of it, it does seem to if it's true in that, then that would seem to suggest that there is a speed to light for it to have to then line up with the speed of, you know, however, however fast one gear two passes yeah. at a time. Yeah, dude, Toby. Yeah, absolutely. Toby, tell him about Arga, or um, what's his name? The Russian guy. Fizzo, yeah, Fizzo in 1850, another experiment in, uh, or measurement in 1850, 1851. That's Fizzo. That was how he calculated the you know, I would say the induction rate of light was through, uh, yeah, he used a wheel. Basically, he shined the light through through a, a wheel with teeth like that, and then he had a mirror on the other side, and then as it came back through the mirror, or back through the teeth of the wheel, he was able to somehow uh, measure that, the proportionality of the light coming back through the mirror, because <clears throat> or coming back from the mirror, because you'd have to have a certain rate at which the light would uh, pulse as it comes back over the teeth, essentially. Right, yes, it would be those pulses of light and whether or not they are in sync with the next gap going by. That was the produce... same thing we were, we were talking about that earlier. Uh, in, in 1984, a dude did that to try and measure the velocity of the earth. And then the next year he got he uh, got thrown out of a window of the, or he, he quote unquote jumped out of the window of the university library that he worked at. For a split second there, it almost sounded like you were going to say he got thrown out of the window of the universe. 
Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! If uh, C is wrong, the entire heliocentric model is immediately falsified. I was literally waiting for y'all to finish our build so you could slow it down for some of the audience members because they may not understand the implications of a variant C. Well, so yeah, talking about the history of these guys that were trying to measure that velocity of light, right? So as soon as they figured that out, as soon as they quantified that, especially as once they quantified that with uh, proportional velocity of water like that, now they know, wow. You can make light, you know, the, the induction rate of light go faster or slower depending on proportional velocities or that induction rate will be, you know, it, that induction rate is relative to the velocity of whatever you're on. So it didn't take long for them to start figuring out how they could theoretically measure the, you know, quote unquote motion of the earth. And that's why, like, that's the whole backdrop, right? We get to Mickelson Morley. It's funny. You can't find anything about their proposals. That stuff's not out there. But there was a reason that they had that proposal in the first place. The mickelson morley experiment was based on, on logic. It was based on a premise of, of exactly what these guys had been measuring since the 1800s, that that proportional velocity of the induction rate of light can, can measure an absolute velocity. And to the point that even nowadays, there's a dude in 2004, he, he showed it unequivocally with experiments in the lab and then got a... Uh, a bunch of money to do more experiments from the military or from the Navy. And then a few years or in 2009, he had an absolute velocity speedometer market or uh, patented. But in any case, I digress. The point is Mickelson Morley was supposed to unequivocally measure the absolute velocity of the earth through the quote unquote cosmos, that motion. It was the one way because we have all this stuff about, oh, well, the the atmosphere sticks to the earth and, you know, somehow gravity keeps all this relative motion going. But we knew we knew with the induction rate of light that that's the one way that we would be able to to actually go against some kind of reference frame, some kind of background frame, some kind of background medium. We, you know, back then they always called it ether because you can't just you can't just induce charge. You can't just have charge going across nothing. It doesn't make any sense. That's illogical. You have to have a background medium to the point where they ad hoc it in in like 30 different ways in modern physics. But I digress again. When they want to go measure that they so they they knew what they were doing. They set this experiment up. They've got They've got it going, or they've got two laser or two light beams, one going, they're going orthogonal from each other. And that difference there, they knew that that difference there between those two orthogonal light beams, when they split at the mirror and then came back and recombined and went to the detector, that fringe shift that they can measure was going to show them their absolute velocity. And they, but they had their mind made up. It was supposed to be 30 kilometers per second. And the device was, it was sensitive enough to measure down to two kilometers per second. And it showed, what was it at that time that, that on that measurement, what did it show? Seven kilometers a second. Is that what that one showed? Does anyone know offhand? Yeah. 6.5 to eight, 6.5 to eight kilometers per second. And they're like, Oh, uh, well, uh, um, uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, instrumental error, uh, yeah, don't look here, anybody. And then, you know, like 15 years later, Einstein comes along and just, throws a wrench into everyone's brains, tells everyone to stop thinking for the, you know, the, the mainstream somehow convinces everyone to stop thinking for themselves. And they tell everybody that the device that they used to measure that absolute velocity of the induction rate of light, that device somehow contracted in direct proportional relationship to the sun. And then when you look at the math behind it, it's, it's, it's utter incoherent nonsense. There's no reason to think that a, device would just proportionally contract in relation to the sun it was it's as witsit said earlier this was a post diction and i think that's a very important distinction that a lot of people don't realize about all the special relativity stuff this is the birthplace of special relativity and this is a religion that our scientific community has adopted and it has infected it and it has its fingers in its in its nails that go it's a deception that everything wraps around and it just gets worse and worse and worse and just keeps wrapping around and wrapping around and it it's messed up everything in physics but and i digress again the point here being that they couldn't accept what the measurement showed. So they made up some crazy nonsense about contraction in relation to the sun. Well, then the reason that we keep pounding about, about this is that when you can show that absolute relative velocity, that absolute relative induction rate, 
there's a lot of questions that they have to answer that they can't answer. And it's, you can't feel an emotion. 